Welcome back to the Dank Swamp Rebellion. It's National Analog Day, and we're here with Analog Ken, Kenneth Wilson. It's because of those sweet 808s. Yeah. <laughs> Under the kick drum. You laugh, but... Give me uh, that, give me that sub resonance, yeah, get, baby. Sub eight hundred eight under the under an actual acoustic kick drum. I bet that sounds killer. I'm yeah. sure I've heard you, it already. You've heard it many times. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And I think that's you can that, do it with a snare drum too. The eight hundred eight is just a sample from the an old synth, right? Like from an eight hundred eight. An so eight hundred eight synth, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's a drum machine, which and is also one of Gravon's favorite uh, Star Wars movie, Revenge of the Sith, bro. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> That's a good movie. I love that movie. Christian Hadenson saw the movie in the theater. Yeah. Me too. I read the Did book. Did you really? Too. Yeah, man. Wow. I saw him on DVD. I saw it in theater. Yeah. Wow. I seen one, two, and three in theater. I didn't see, any I didn't of see them. the I didn't see the first two prequel movies in the theater because I wasn't interested. But a friend of mine wanted me to go see Revenge of the Sith with him, and I was like, man, this is actually pretty fucking good. I waited a very long time to watch those three. Well, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I went through there. a super depressive moment of my life, and then I watched those, and it got worse. So that was Yeah, the, the first two prequels will do that to you. Well, when him and I go through, like, insomnia <laughs> fits, yeah. you know, we'll go watch episode one. You know, that's probably why <laughs> I didn't sleep. But you're right to fucking sleep. You haven't watched episode one that's, in a while. That's why I couldn't sleep last week, because yeah. I didn't watch episode one. Yeah. Damn it, man. i got to follow my gut sometimes. 30 minutes of that garbage, man. Right. <laughs> so you like it? I, I go right to the, uh, to the <laughs> you, pod you, race. You actually <laughs> like that movie. Yeah. I like it's one. Like, it's a utilitarian love. It is. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's forced. You, it's my you favorite it so sleep much, you tool. Love it. <laughs> it's forced on me. Oh, I'm like that. I love B movies. Like terrible. Terrible. Some of them I do. Like, like for instance, I mean, like the, the original uh, Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. Like I love that shit. Yeah. yeah the yeah. original. Ninja Watch Turtles. it on loop. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And all its ignorant 90s glory. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's why we love it. I think it's because, you know, like, it had an impression on us as a kid. So, like, if you wouldn't have watched that and watch it now, it'd probably be a little difficult to, to go through. Yeah. It would just feel like a crappy B movie, I like though, the new which ones is good. Too, but it wasn't trying too hard. <laughs> right. It, it was, wasn't, like, it, super serious. It like, did not take itself is, serious. Hey, have you seen The Meg? No. That's a no, fucking no. piece of shit. That <laughs> movie it great? sucks. Is it great? No, it's, it's, in a, it's, it's, it's bad in a bad way. Instant garbage. It just sucks, yeah. Fair like, enough. I can't watch it again. I own it on 4K. I was like, oh, this can't be too bad. Waste of fucking it's money. It's Jason Statham. Dude, right? I thought it would be somewhat <laughs> decent. No, man. It's, of course not. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> well, well, have y'all seen the new Suicide Squad? No, I haven't watched it yet. No, uh, all I'm gonna no, say, I couldn't, I couldn't stomach the first one. Well, this one is a is they remade it. Yeah, so she's the only have. one in it. So there's no Will Smith. Horrible. Like they that. added the to the title, so yes. that's how you should know it's a remake. Right. Yeah. So it's awesome. It really is. And the best part about it is, uh, what's his name? King Shark. What's his name? I don't know. I'm not a DC from fan. DC. Anyway, King Shark is uh, Sylvester Stallone, and he said has as many words as a. Uh, Vin Diesel did as Groot. And so this is his best <laughs> shit ever. This is his best shit ever. So it worked out really well. So it's still Harley Quinn, but just nobody. Oh, Margot Robbie <laughs> is, is Harley Quinn. And but... friends. How... <laughs> friends. How's it, how's it a remake then? It's it's com- They be- took out all the garbage and they then took left out Margot Will- Robbie. <laughs> they took out Will Smith yeah. and now uh, Dead well, Shots. Who was completely wasted in that movie, by a the fucking way. Idiot, Everything yeah. was wasted in that movie. That movie was a complete waste of. And bro, let me tell you something. The kaiju at the end is freaking awesome. Like they spared no expense on this shit. They sold a lot of merch though. Yeah. Yeah. That might be how they. Are you into shit like that, like Marvel and Star Wars, and like? Uh. Not so much. Not so much DC. Yeah. I. I I mean, I I saw the Avengers movies in the theater. I didn't care for that. But they don't. I mean, it's. I like Loki now. It's, it's a cool technical thing. It's a spectacle. I, I, like, to, I like to watch spectacle stuff for, mm-hmm. for yeah. spectacle I'm sake. You, I'm with it on that. But it's, if you asked me what my favorite movies were, the Avengers movies would not be very high on that list. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So what would it be? Like what? what my favorite movie? Yeah. Mulholland Drive. Really? Yeah. Man, I watched Napoleon Dynamite. That says a lot about me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's life as a house. <laughs> Shut up, dude. No, it's not. <laughs> 
I fucking hate you. Man. <laughs> Have you ever seen House? The yeah, m- yeah, movie yeah. House. I used to. I used to uh, oh, not the no. a movie House. Not, he was yeah. talking about the Doctor not Show. House <laughs> M- yeah, no, MD. I like that show too. House yeah. MD. Yeah. That was a killer show. Yeah, I did watch that. That was a yeah. great show. Yeah. Was I a, always thought that uh, Dr. House was some kind of skinwalker anyway. Hugh so. Laurie, right? Yep, fun. Hugh Laurie. Yeah. He has a really good American accent. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I didn't know. So does Benedict it. Cumberbatch. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't even tell with that fucking guy, yeah. huh? And then he gets on an interview. He's like, hey, buy me another shrimp on the Bobby shadow. I'm like, what the fuck did he say? <laughs> that's, that's, that's Australian. That's, that's, that's the same thing, my man. My dad's Australian. Dude, the Australians were just kicked out of England. We all yeah. know this. Yeah. It's fine. My, well, well they're I prisoners, can, right? I can show you. I can show do, do you the you prison un- ships that my family members were <laughs> do, on. Do you understand that they're just the coon asses of uh, of Europe? Yeah. <laughs> what, what yeah, my dad was born in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And both of both of my four times great grandmothers are on the same prison ship. <laughs> <laughs> For shankings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you get to one, visit? One was a stagecoach robber. Wow. And, and the other your stole, gran- one of your grandmothers? Stole watches. Yeah. Watch These are the women in the family. <laughs> That's the tame shit. Yeah. yeah. No, they're bad bitches. Robbed a locomotive. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Damn, my mama was just a hooker. <laughs> yeah. The blue moon. Yeah. Rest in peace, mama. Yeah. I don't think uh, I, I, my grandpa lost his, all his middle toes. That was kind of cool. Broke out? What? Lightning strike. <laughs> <laughs> Struck off his toes. A giant anchor just fell clean on his fucking Wow. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. He Damn. used to show me that's that as a kid. That's worse than a lightning strike. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Jesus. He used to show me that as a kid and it always looked like he was doing the like fucking hang loose. That makes your butthole like tighten up thinking yeah. about that. Right? He didn't like when he showed me, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> Mama so, liked it though. Yeah. <laughs> He'd work that big toe real good. That's an instant uh, shocker. Yeah. <laughs> toe cheese. Yeah, one in the stink, none in the pink. <laughs> good Lord. But, but um, yeah, Australia is just, uh, you know, your European Cajuns. That, yeah. That's I true. like to watch the Aussie Gold Hunter thing. Have you ever seen that? That's pretty badass. It's on uh, Hulu. But they go out there and they can uh, actually rent, you know, lease out plots of land. And then they have they can stay there so long, so many days, and then they gotta move. But this one guy made this huge air machine. So they take a bulldozer and they dump all this dirt and they just scrape the you know two inches of the 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 terrain off. And uh, especially after the rainy season, because it all comes down from the that mountains. That sounds like some Aussie shit too. And dude, they're out there and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna get some uh, dingoes and some beers and some gold and whatever." And all of a sudden, <laughs> they dump it in there, and this thing starts to shake from all the air pressure through it. It's huge, just like the size of an eighteen wheeler. And the gold just floats to the top. That's and, crazy. Yeah, and they just pick it off, hmm. so they can like clear an area in no time. So they just keep moving and moving, and like, yeah, we just made. They I mean make a million dollars. For this little season, and they take off the rest of the year. Wow, that's a. Uh, they make a million dollars and wear the same clothes all year round. That's right, like they every never, Australian. Yeah, nice and dusty. <laughs> they smell smell good and yeah. all that good stuff. Yep. So, dude, when you when you're listening to these movies, are you picking it apart? And then yeah. do you take that in heavy consideration yeah, of why you like something? Yeah, I mean, I, I compartmentalize almost everything in my life, including that. Yeah. I, I will watch something because I feel like seeing a certain actor or, you know, like a certain cinematographer. Or I want to listen to a Dolby Atmos track that I like, like Blade Runner Final Cut. Mm-hmm. Sounds incredible. Yeah, See, the movie that does it for me, as far as the audio sound goes, um, most people probably won't, won't even know what this is. But it's The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. To me, like, the background... Uh, track to that, the soundtrack to that is amazing. Across the universe, across the universe is, is awesome also too. amazing. Yes, when it comes to sound design. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a whole nother level, man. They wanted that to be the entire experience, which they nailed. You know, because I watched that. I don't think IMAX. I've ever watched it all the way through. Oh man, I watched it at IMAX when I was tripping. It was freaking. Once you get <laughs> past the novelty part of it, yeah, and actually look at it for what it is, it's. It really did blow because it gets away. deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and the soundtrack to that, and and the way that the actors and actresses was were also able to perform because they they went out and did that that was, live. It was Broadway. a giant yeah, show. It was too. huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So I, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate all that good stuff, but I look at it this way: you could, I could watch something where, like, uh, what was it a uh, Kong versus Godzilla, right? Mm -hmm. And they, yeah. were, they weren't a whole I watched lot of, that the other day. Actually. Yeah, right. It was great. There yeah, weren't a whole all, lot of huge names awesome. in there, though. No, right. Fuck that shit. They don't need exactly. That shit. You, you don't need fucking it. monsters. But the music was good. Yeah, it sounded good. It looked good. Yeah, right. It looked great. Inches. I'm watching for fucking Godzilla. Right. I'm not watching for uh, Brian Cranston. I mean, that'd be a cool plus. He's Man. not in the new one, though. Shit. But that's but the, what I, but exactly that one, what I'm I like saying. that movie. I saw that in the theater. Dude, right. Cranston riding it. Godzilla with like a leather saddle. Dude, I would watch that, yeah. Okay, yeah. It, sure, it doesn't, make, awesome. it doesn't would, make any sense. It doesn't have to. But that's why it's good. <laughs> and that's why I have an action figure of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new card. <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> Fucking Dino Riders with Brian Crane. <laughs> but he, he'd probably be into it. I mean, look, his, oh, he yeah. did Power Why Rangers. But Why that's, the fuck not? But I think that's a, another even part of the the world of music. Will he play the sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Cranston was one of the Babettes. The Megazord. One of the big Babettes. Dude, I forgot which one it was, but he did some voiceover work on Power Rangers back in the game. He did um, Rita Repulse's like some of her things. Goldor. Really. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna get those guys. Is that Cranston? No. <laughs> shit. Man, you got my hopes up. No. I don't even know if that's how I said it. But I think in music, that's one of the most underrated areas to me, and it has been for a long time, you know, soundtracks to certain movies. Yeah. Because if you go listen to even like A Knight's Tale, the way that was put together with that movie, and you know, that was kind of a, a family movie, but it was awesome the way they, 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 they mixed that whole thing it was so cool. So, um, you know, I, I, I hate it too that in a day and age where you can just pick a song. You know, I can just take the this song. The jukebox mentality. Yeah. yeah. Man. This is Grovon Mayer from the Dank Swamp Rebellion podcast reminding you to stock up on your Elmer's Chiwis. Um, get you some of that. No, I'm you, the original's good, man. The original's real good. I uh, like me the barbecue one. I like the, uh, man, the, the taco one. Bro, I, I, I dip that in some ranch meat. Uh, they got the hot and spicy. They got the pizza. The pizza one's real, real good, man. And so is the green onion. And if you like a little something sweet after, get you some of that caramel popcorn. They ain't, uh, they ain't sleeping on that, uh, that caramel popcorn, now. And uh, remember, if it ain't Elmer, it ain't Chewy. Elmer's quality snacks since 1946. Oh, don't forget about those seasonal flavors. This message is approved by Grove on my year. I, I like the nostalgia of buying an album, like buying a CD. Me too. You know? I definitely wanted to talk about that too, because no one listens to albums anymore. It's I do. Oh, so, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> no one <laughs> listens to albums, yeah. even if they were listening to albums, because they don't release them in album format. Yeah. No, so, there is that aspect too. So there's y y the single has taken over because everyone needs to regurgitate these things over and over again and yeah, make the new the single every two fucking weeks. You have to. Yeah. No, to I be know. relevant. And yeah. it sucks that that's what it is because yeah. I'm an album guy yeah, too. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that. So. I only exclusively I still, listen, irrelevant. <laughs> still listen to albums too. I, I, I will <laughs> not listen to a single. Yeah. Like, even if it's new from a band that I really like, there's a good chance that I'm not checking out that single because it's not an album or an EP at least. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but I, I wish people could understand again. That and it's not in every scenario. I'm not saying this is Miley Cyrus type shit that this is going to happen with. But for instance, Queens of the Stone Age, right? You know I love that album, uh, The Evil Has Landed, right? So if you go listen to that song, it's a great classics, song, though. right? Yeah. But if you listen to the entire album from beginning to end, it tells a story. Yeah, that song makes a lot more sense in context. It does, right? And yeah. so does and and uh, you know people might give me a little hate for this, but. Um, Green Day, um, Boulevard broke. Uh, no, that also. Oh, 21st Century Breakdown. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, Chris Lord Algae makes that album by the right. way. So the guy I mentioned if you earlier. listen beginning to end, you know, and you're and you're any type of you have any type of visual uh, mind, you could see this. You know, you could see the angst in this in this album. It's freaking awesome. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying it's and, very well executed album. It is. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying is is that. If you're if the storyteller 
behind and, and it could be through anything like um one thing uh, i love about uh scott Marin and cyanide smile is that he as the guitarist wrote that album over 30 years you know yeah and so it was put together the story from beginning to end you want to listen to it beginning to end and that that's something that's died because the majority of people throughout the world i don't feel do that anymore and yes i know there's this little bit of this revival where there's cassette decks again well, and there's vinyls and all yeah. this shit but for the most part it's the oh i like this song because i heard it on on uh on top 100 radio a million times yeah yeah right and it's pumped in because that's what they're trying to feed you at that moment the art of concept may, yeah i'll may say d- this be I, diminishing I, I don't make music for those people so it, it is yeah. what it is if you want to listen to it that's fine but uh, the people who listen to abigail's ghost and anything else that i work on it's usually you know not the type of people who like mcdonald's right. music that's a different yeah, it's crowd. a different it's a yeah, different thing it is yeah. It is, but it could be a much bigger thing because they just don't know, yeah. right? It's it's a younger generation that isn't they they weren't taught that they've lost sight because of you know the things that are going on in society right now. I mean, I can't blame them for that. Well, <laughs> but you, the, even more reason to have music to escape to, right? Right. You got something to escape. But from it's also now. more of a reason to have to try and have a revival of that at least on the Bayou in our yeah. own community because we don't want our future generations. To think that it's okay not to fully understand. We love music in this area. We have we and we we preach it on our show, is that uh, some of the top musicians of the world, okay, in this Bayou region that we're sitting in, yeah. and that and that's not I just musicians, that. artists, that's, that's very true, movie people, like you you name it, it's here. There's a lot okay. of sauce. There's a lot Brilliant. of insanely talented genes right. floating around this place. Brilliant people. Yeah. Right. And so. Um, when you have that mixing pot of that, um, there's no reason why we can't have more of that go on instead of just have it go to the wayside. Yeah, yeah, because we don't nurture it in the state. No, not at all. No, something like that would have to start from community in the first place. And too. it is. There's yeah. a there's a rebirth. I mean, it, it starts with something as little as a music store opening in uh, Galliano. Did you know that? There, what? There's a legit there's music a store music open on the Bayou Galliano. that sells actual records. No, that sells guitar oh, strings oh, and drum heads. And what is that place called? Are you in Bayou Lafouche or Terrebonne? Well, I have good news for you. Tired of looking for guitar strings at a pawn shop or looking for patch cables or, you know, just those things that you need to make it happen for the next gig? Well, I'm happy to say Bayou Merchandise and Specialties has your back. This shop has everything to support local musicians and creatives from strings, instruments, effects pedals, picks, practice amps to live amplification. And if you don't see something in the shop that you're looking for, they'd be more than happy to place that order for you. And when it comes to customer service, there is no competition. Bayou Merchandise and Specialty staff goes above and beyond to make sure you are getting what you need. Tired of practicing cooped up in the house all day? Join them for their live jam sessions throughout the week. Check their Facebook for dates and details. Go jam with some of the most talented musicians on the Bayou. Bayou Merchandise and Specialties is your one-stop shop on Bayou Lafouche, located right next to the IGA. Give them a call at 985-632-0604. That's 985-632-0604. Buy you merchant and specialties. Yeah, so these guys, um, they initially were trying to start a Mardi Gras um, novelty shop, right? Yeah. And then COVID hit and they canceled Mardi Gras. Yeah. So they had all this stock and couldn't do anything. So they adapted quickly and they also realized that That's crazy. with you know, certain places, that'll name a name. Smart though. Because <laughs> we're not sponsored by them, but... Um, they adapted to the situation. They adapted to the situation of our local place closing. So we literally have we have to go either to the city or order online. Yeah, right. No, that's happening in Homa too. Right. CNM leaving. Exactly. Well, I mean, we still got uh, Fabregas. 
But it's very Somewhat, limited because it, yeah. because it's Hoffman and Fabregas. I'm not buying my strings from a pawn shop. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. If I'm in a yeah. dire straight situation, right. then yeah, I'll do it. But I would much rather support this business to stay and do the selection all day for being for being just a small. It's amazing. I'm like, so happy awesome. they exist. It's yeah. so. What cool. do they sell? Just they they focus on accessories. They have a few guitars. Okay. Okay. They have stuff like but drum heads, sticks. Um, and the every order. colored Ebo, yeah. they fix. They do a lot of repair there, yeah. which is awesome. The service side of it, I'm super stoked for because I don't like doing that stuff myself. Yeah, um, no, nobody does. No, it's not fun. I'd rather pay someone in town to do that. And they're, and they're doing the same thing. They're trying to open it up to where you can go in and have jam nights in there for the younger generations and, and have actual musicians of the area yeah. go and play in this place and revive this yeah, we culture. We used to have that back right? in the day here. Exactly. Right. What happened to Battle of Bands, bro? Hey, you remember, uh, oh, shit, Main Street. Mm. And then we there, talk about Main Street and all there, the time. How shitty I, that place was. When I first was. started playing bass, I took. But it was uh, better than nothing. I took lessons at Kenny Bell's place. Oh, remember? Kenny. Yeah. Kenny. Hell yeah. 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 He's cool, man. Is he still around? Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's not. He doesn't live around here. Though. Oh, okay. I think mean, he moved away. But yeah. I added him on Facebook like several months back. I was like, man, I wonder what he's doing now. No but shit. Yeah, I, I took lessons there. Yeah. With a guy named Ernie Milstead. You know, um, God, that's familiar. Yeah, Ernie, man, I think he teaches at Nichols now. My grandma almost killed Kenny. <laughs> Why? Because um, I thought I was. So, I, I played with this kid in church, Bobby Abair. Believe it or not, he's from Body Blue. Not um, the football. Player. I wonder how much shit he got. A lot, damn. But he was a sick guitarist. But he had a um, he had a PV PC one for okay. Collins, right? So yeah. it was nice. It had hot rails Ooh. the whole nine. It was hot. And uh, it was all quilted maple. Fucking and he was hot shields, bro. And, and all I had was like a pawn shop PV Raptor that would never stay in tune. So, um, so you sounded terrible, pretty much. <laughs> like every song, I was retuning, <laughs> and, and that's back in the days of it like rocked the fuck out of that thing. Though, guitar yeah. processors too, man. Like RP five, RP six, RP seven. I remember Digitex. that. Thing. Digitex. Yeah. I had a Digitech BP eight. Yeah, mm. yeah. 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 Black. Also, the RP eleven, the big silver one with the two. Hey, and you know what's cool is that those things still sound cool. Yeah, they, they still work. It. They yeah, do, and they still work. Do you remember well. the purple rack mount? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, I, uh, a friend of mine the, the still black, has the his. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, I had them all. Yeah, they had the the silver one. I think it was silver or gold. Yeah. That was like all that the Perfect the Circle album, Meridian Ohm. It's a. All those weird yeah. sounds. I didn't know come that. from that guy. That's cool. You can you can. It's, it's a that, pain in the ass. Well, machine that was the first too. one that came with a MIDI cable. Yeah. So you could change it through, you know, programs and whatever. Um, but Bobby had locking guitar machines oh, uh, on his guitar. Yeah. Shalers. Right. So I went to I went to Kenny's place with my grandma. I was a kid and the guy that worked on guitars had to the, the machine heads that we ordered where the hole was a little bit bigger, so he had to drill it out, and he cracked the, gu- the guitar head. So my grandma went in there with a Bible going nuts on Kenny because they tried to put it back together with wood filler and wood glue, and yeah. it looked like straight shit. Yeah. Okay? Because it cracked all the way through all of the of the portholes. So... Bruh. They did you a favor. <laughs> she, yeah, because I had... And it was funny because <laughs> he gave me this really old, shitty Kramer to play in church and all, it was black and on the back end of it it had a huge red demon <laughs> sticker right and my pastor was like freaking nuts about it he don't like, show that he's one. like you need to get your guitar back like, so my grandma no bitch, it's a seraphim yeah that's exactly it, it's just a red one he's sunburned but uh, he's hell that's, that's the blood of <laughs> satan's minions he's mad at him so uh, my grandma bitch that kenny enough to where she actually he actually ordered a freaking a uh, quilted maple, like a three hundred dollar neck for this hundred dollar guitar. Jesus Christ! And renecked the whole thing. He had a warmest neck. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> so uh, this is a sick it neck. Fucked. This garbage it was so body. fucked, bro. Yeah, man. And I walked into church all proud. Did he a wood body? Did he have the Floyd on it? It was yeah. a Floyd Rose bridge. Yeah. yeah, dude, I can't stand those bridges. That floating tremolo. I had one. They're around. cool. Unless you have to fix something. I will never That's right. set one yeah. up in my entire life again, and I've never bought one again. My I, only, my only thing was, is I was young, right, and I didn't have, I didn't have people around me teaching me shit. I, like I said, I had to play to the, my, my first acoustic guitar. I only had three strings, so I had that for like seven months of my life. I didn't have a full set of strings when I was learning how to play. So, 
when I got my first electric guitar, I thought I was hot shit because I was like, man, this is like a whole new world and I'm faster and all this other shit, you know? So I was just, I was just trying to do something. I didn't have people showing me anything. So when I got my uh my jackson that dx12 from cody at soundstage right mm -hmm. and it had that locking floating tremolo and i could play an entire lock-in for church all night long with never never retuning yeah, you know i mean it just it just sits there you know trucking and i that was good for me because i didn't have to be so technical i could just play rhythm guitar you know in my shitty punk band and you used it. used to dive bomb no, I, I actually never put the uh, <laughs> the, the trim bar. was always up. <laughs> yeah, I was just standard tuning. It's the no, corn technique. No crazy shit. Just yeah. I was just always played safe. Oh man, and I'd love to be good with a trim, but I, I'll never buy one. I will never do it. So fuck it. I have two bases with tremolos. Really? Yeah, yeah. That was a big primus fan back in the day oh primus so, yeah. yeah he oh. had he had a kaler tremolo on his base did you uh did you get uh tickets to that online thing during covid they did? no i didn't you should yeah. have it was uh, amazing yeah. i didn't watch it i saw a bootleg video that's uh -oh. the way i go it was it was primus yeah. that played yeah yeah hell yeah, yeah. In the South, there's always a reason to drink beer. Now the Rebellion's giving you one more. Pickled Peppers Hop Shop. Homebrew kits delivered straight to your door. The ceremony is about to begin. Become a member of the One Million Brew Club today at PickledPeppersHopShop.com. And don't forget to listen to Tyson and Tanner on their hit podcast, Pickled Peppers Hop Talk. Check out Pickled Peppers Hop Shop. Use promo code DSR. Talks to get 20% off any brew kit. And don't forget to try the DSR Talks down the bayou Magnolia Saison. Thank you for listening to the Dang Swamp Rebellion. Tune in next week for an awesome crossover episode with Off the Deep End Podcast and the Dang Swamp Rebellion.